Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Erdem Yilmaz. Um, I'm a PhD student at Reading University, United Kingdom. I am based in UK as well. And my supervisor uh, is Julian Kunkel. And we are working on, within the computer science department. And my research uh, thesis and the title is Smart Mapping of Scientific Workflows onto Heterogeneous Resources. So what do we mean by that? So um, there were there were two main main points uh, that drive us to this research. the The first problem was the data sizes uh, are approaching exabyte scale, uh, and which are practically uh, too big at the moment to to transfer them from from node to node. And um, the existing uh, software, scientific software and scientific workflows, uh, they, they require more parallelism. And uh, we were also trying to see if we can uh, increase the use of accelerated hardware to help with the speed ups, possible speed ups that we can gain. And the other um, main um, research problem was the the use of these uh, accelerated hardware because uh, every day uh, various devices are being integrated into the existing HPCs and data centers uh, when used they can they can provide speed ups that's the main motivation behind uh, integrating and using them but the existing scientific workflows um, has to change or um, at the moment, they, they can't adapt easily to these new hardware. So we must uh, we must find a way to get use of these hardware and get to adapt the existing software uh, on the on the new hardware or on the new environment where we have the opportunity of using these accelerated devices. Having these two problems at hand. Uh, I will I will start by uh, describing a simple use case, which will which will be uh, which will help us to to understand what the proposal is uh, and how how are we going to tackle the problems previously mentioned. So let's assume that a scientist wants to read the simplest case uh, an n-dimensional data from a file, multiply the data with a scalar value, and then save them save the values back to another file. So this is a simple read, multiply, and save, write operation. So there are three operators involved, as I said, file read, multiply, and file save. Um, how can we run this task, this, these three tasks, um, more efficiently uh, when we are given a set of resources? Um, how can we save scientists time uh, when, when he or she wants to restructure their code or this workflow uh, when, when it's time to run it on a different set of nodes, uh, hardware. And every time these modifications are required, the, the, the person in question requires some domain knowledge to, to make the modifications because uh, every available, every, every uh, accelerated device or the, uh, or the new devices or the environment will require some modification to get use uh, of the of the available computational capacity. So while doing that, uh, while while trying to run these simple three tasks, and given a set of resources, uh, which combination of um, nodes or hosts uh, will perform better when when we apply it to the to the whole workflow, and how can we how can we uh, scale up this uh, solution when we have large data so these these are the questions to be asked even on this uh, on this simple use case the 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 proposals or the the possible solutions to these problems uh, we can we can discuss them in in three folds 
first the the data size as it's too large uh, we need to we can't move the data so the code needs to be transferred to the data uh, where it is located to 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 avoid copying the data and we need a way to uh, utilize the underlying hardware resources we need either to detect or rely on a user's declaration on what the capabilities of the devices are uh, can we use the gpu for example or cpu together with the gpu and we will we will we will need to make a decision on on which storage uh, will be used on which nodes and can we can we leverage in situ and in transit processing techniques um the the, the main focus of this uh, research is around uh, creating an abstract workflow um, so that uh, the the underlying resources are uh, are not uh, as transparent as to the to the end user but the framework uh, on top of that can make decisions smart decisions on where to run the actual code on on which hardware and which will uh, in turn help the scientists uh, to save some time and use the uh, use the headspace for for the domain problem they are working on so um, this is the, the overall picture that we are planning uh, for the as a as a we will be developing as a framework so the user in this case the scientist prepares um, his or her uh, workflow through the use of uh, previously defined operators and then and then this uh, user created uh, workflow is processed and uh, we we apply uh, some some machine learning model and some evolutionary uh, scheduling algorithms on top of that I'll come to them uh, later in these slides and then the the executable uh, workflow uh, created from the user supplied workflow is then uh, executed on the hardware and hopefully in the best possible way uh, utilizing the the underlying set of hardware as I just mentioned <laughs> I went ahead of it and the scientist declares the workflow in terms of well-defined operators and creates the the operator DAG uh, directed acyclic graph it means uh, in this case we had three tasks read multiply and save so among the bunch of already defined variables uh, operators the user selects its uh, task graph and then forms it and then um, the hardware spec of the allocated uh, computational nodes is also given. Um, this uh, user created um, workflow is then transformed into a, a, a task uh, workflow. These are the operators given by the user and their relationship is uh, given as well. Um, behind the scenes, each operator um, has um, each operator has a machine learning model to um, to predict the uh, performance of the operator given an input or a, uh, or on a uh, given an input and uh, the computational resource that it will be running on. So each operator is associated with a model uh, that can predict its um, make span uh, the make span is the the time it takes to complete a task sometimes referred to as end-to-end -end delay as well so once once we know which operators are used we already have these models so they can predict the make span of the um, individual task um, these uh, machine learning models uh, that can that are used for for make span prediction uh, will be um will be running over certain features like uh, input sizes the underlying uh, hardware capabilities uh, the type of and the speed of cpu and the number of kernels on a gpu uh, the speed and the capacity of the ram 
uh, the type of the operating system, which has also effects around buffering uh, over I.O. So all of these uh, features are built into the model. And with, with training, of course, uh, enough training, the, the trained model will be able to make um, predictions on the make span. And this is also described here as well. I again went ahead. Uh, the trained model is used per host with the following features. Uh, the input size and the hardware resources uh, given as input. And the uh, machine learning model will be creating make spam predictions. Uh, how long will it take uh, this this operator to run on on node node one given an input size? So these predictions will be will be stored for uh, for making further decisions on the scheduling. And the individual uh, make spam predictions uh, will become part of the overall cost model for the entire workflow. Yeah. So um, how do we how do we do the mapping? The which tasks should be running on which nodes, which hosts? This is the biggest. Uh, problem. This is also uh, called an MP hard problem, an optimization problem, uh, because you are trying to map uh, a set of tasks onto a set of resources given hardware uh, hardware nodes that will do the computation. Um, here are a few uh, possible combinations on how to run a given set of uh, tasks on a given set of nodes. So the mapping model uh, has to decide which one is the best. Shall we, uh, shall we run the first two tasks on node one and the third one on node two, which poses uh, an in-situ processing uh, schema or, uh, or any other combination of the same? Or can we use, um, can we use, um, in transit processing and defer the arithmetic operator to an external device and use the first two tasks on, on, on two nodes. Can we do that? This is another interesting problem. Um, a one-to-one -one mapping if we have enough nodes run all tasks on their separate nodes, uh, will that be better? Or keep them all together on the same node and avoid any network traffic? That's That's another uh, possibility. So all of these uh, needs to be ranked to come to a decision to which one is better. A more representative use case is, is useful to understand the operation. Let's assume that uh, an 11 operator workflow is given by the user like this, saying that operator one's output is consumed by operator two and this operator's output is consumed by the others and so on and so forth. Um, if you pay attention to the uh, certain operators, there, there, there are um, abbreviations like GPU and IB, which stands for InfiniBand. These represent uh, possible alternatives Alternative implementations of the same operator, like um, in the in the previous one, there was um, read, multiply, and write. So these are possibly other types of operators, but uh, different from operator three. Operator six has a GPU implementation as well. So operator three is targeting a CPU, but operator six can do both CPU and GPU, depending on the operator type. And Let's assume that we are given for this 11 task, we are given five hosts. Uh, and these five hosts are represented here. And we have certain capabilities around these five hosts. One, two of them can uh, can do GPU calculations. They have GPU. And there is an infinite band switch between the H3 and H4. These uh, hardware capabilities will affect how these 11 tasks will be mapped onto these five resources. Um, the possible uh, inquiries are, can we gain speed over using the GPU? And can we benefit from CPU offloading, which is the intransit processing, if we, if we use the InfiniBand switch here? 
how, how do we do the mapping? So we have 11 tasks, five hosts. How do we map these tasks to these uh, hosts to get a to get the best outcome, to, to get the minimum uh, max span over on the overall uh, workflow? So 10 tasks, five hosts. I said 10 tasks because the first task uh, is the starting point and is generally tied up to a host for its uh, input dependency. So 10 tasks over five hosts, that are five to the 10 permutations. So you can't just brute force go ahead and uh, rank them, calculate their cost, sort them, and then find the result, the optimum solution. Uh, even with 10 to five hosts, 10 tasks to five hosts, it's five to the 10. So it's it's too much time for a scheduling or mapping algorithm. And it has to complete in a reasonable time. <laughs> Otherwise, there is no point of using a, a mapping algorithm. So which, which mapping algorithms can we use in this sense? Um, these are the uh, obvious first uh, four broad categories, the greedy one. Uh, it has the possibility of underutilizing the resources you have. Um, List-based one makes some assumptions based on the experience before uh, your other experience, and it's generally biased because you are favoring certain uh, mappings, either the critical paths uh, or the shortest time. Uh, there are various decisions made 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 on the list-based um, scheduling algorithms. You can use a dynamic one uh, without doing in-depth analysis. And this generally ends up uh, missing the certain opportunities for speed-ups. Um, a static mapping algorithm uh, will be unlikely to uh, adapt to the changing constraints during execution. So what are we going to do? Um, it's a hybrid approach, it's the best. Uh, this is our point, <laughs> viewpoint. Uh, a, hybrid, a hybrid approach around evolutionary techniques uh, can help uh, with some of the shortcomings of these four uh, general category, general uh, uh, mapping algorithms. Um, from the uh, evolutionary uh, mapping algorithms, uh, we have tried genetic algorithms up until now. Um, by the name, by its name, genetic algorithms uh, refer to, uh, sorry, the, the genetic uh, or evolutionary algorithms uh, rely on uh, random mutations and it is um, favoring the, the, the fittest uh, candidate as normal genetic uh, phenomena is realized. Um, main challenge is to represent your problem in the genetic domain. So the, the main problem is the, um, the representing your problem as individuals, uh, where in, in our case, it's a candidate mapping between tasks and resources and a fitness value, which corresponds to a max span and certain operations like crossover and mutations and you create the generations and iterate over them to get the best outcome. Um, there are problems with it, of course, and you might get stuck in a local optimum and missing the global optimum of the mappings. And the other general problem is it might take too long to converge to a solution, uh, which makes the solution unusable. Um, I am conscious of time, so. Was it 20 minutes? So I, I, I will speed up. Um, Hurry up, please. Yeah, the the um, genetic algorithms are, in our cases, represent as genome strings and hosts and the, uh, sorry, the tasks and their hosts, and a possible candidate solution is represented here. Two of them. And then you make certain operations on them and slap the uh, host task uh, mappings and then arrive at a different workflow of make span. And sorry. And yeah, applying these crossovers and mutations uh, iteratively, you get a solution which is close to the global optimum most of the time. 
uh, where I am with my research. Um, I, I am almost done with the literature survey. It has matured enough for me to go go ahead with with uh, with our proposed solution. So I have uh, went through uh, a set of candidate studies and marked them and tried to see uh, which features are uh, exhibited in these uh, possible work workflows and studies to identify the gaps uh, within the studies, as you can see here. Uh, which which our product will be or our framework will be addressing. What's next? Uh, we need to investigate the computational offloading to InfiniBand, uh, which is an important point uh, for us, and uh, experiment with the machine learning models to find the best technique to be used for make spam prediction. And try to answer uh, what can we do if we have uh, too many tasks and not many hosts and, and explore other uh, natural evolutionary algorithms that can be used uh, in hybrid fashion in our mapping algorithms. So that's the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, are we taking them now or postponing them to the end. So if you have any questions, I think the most convenient way we found is always to just put them into the chat. That way okay. I, I, as a moderator, will read them at the end of the talk. Um, yeah, thanks Adam for this, for this talk.